32.878. Micromolar? Ash, we don't actually know what it is on. I think it's micromolar. And we are live. Good morning from the RV Falcor in the Gulf of California. Uh, you're watching a live feed from the RV Sebastian. We are transiting along the seabed, exploring a new site, looking for areas of fluid discharge. Uh, you see a lot of brittle stars and shell hash along the seabed. This is a very productive area, as you can tell by the material that you see in the water column. Let us know if you have any questions, and we're happy to try and answer them. What's the bottom water temperature here? Three degrees. Okay. Oh, not that one. Sorry, the other area. Yeah, you can take the one that watched your the valley. It's already gone. Not the one that. Yep. There's an octopus checking us out. These are these Acarax um, clams. There's got to be live ones around here with all these dead, with all the shell. These are these really interesting clams that burrow down into the seabed. Oh, yeah. Those ones, when the when they have these little fingerlings hanging out like that, that's they're dead. Um, that's residual, but the.
Yes. Are we on top of it now? No, but I'm wondering if the video where we saw it here, but this mass right here might be yeah. meant on top of that. That's just a so it's You should be able to pick it up on the sonar. Yeah. yeah. You guys have a WTF button. I didn't notice that before. I like that because that comes in handy. Yeah. What are what are all these? I don't know what that is. Let me. Oh, those are shell hash. Some probably clam. Those actually might be live clam burrows. Can we drop a target here? Because we could come back here and get some stuff for Christian. Um, uh. Mus uh, muscle muscle clam field. Going to check. Ooh, nice. Look at that one. We haven't seen those before. Again? Just trying to ask the station people. It's a bit funny sometimes. It's a bit of the wrong game setting. Gotcha. This is quite a field. So this is very active, this area, for there to be this much gel hash. And is that a little squid? Try to see if I can figure out what these are. These are clams or mussels. Um, these are clams or clams. I can tell. Um, it. We have to find mussels. Yeah, gotcha. Let's check it out. Oh, we're picking up microbial mats now. Okay. Is that mussels right there? Oh my gosh. Please, please, please. Let it be mussels. Right there. Oh, there's a gastropod. Jeez, please. Sink. 
<coughs> away. Are they? Oh, those are clams. Baby clams, I think. Yeah, yeah. A lot of animals in there. You know, with those clams. I'd really like to find some mussels, though. Seriously. That is fairly reducing sediment. Um, I'm kind of surprised. There's Matt right in front of us at the top of the screen. Who pulled these shells here? Uh, Santa. <laughs> um, okay, now we're in a pockmark. So can we move around to port very slowly? Yeah. Yeah. So this is an area of active seepage. Um, the white microbial mat that you see here is a good indicator of high rates of, of fluid discharge. It's probably very gassy. We're not quite to our targeted uh, gas seat, but can we drop a target here? Yep. Uh, pockmark with microbial mats. Oh, like crater one? Yeah. It's gorgeous. To me, it's gorgeous. To most people, it's a hole of mud. Um, wow. Yeah, so the if it's really actively seeping, you get all kinds of Creases and cracks and crevices where material slowly comes out. Why the Probably because there was a gas hydrate there that destabilized and left the pockmark. Yeah. We've. drove over it actually Really? So the pressure? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, that's pretty common. So if we are lucky, we will see some gas hydrate on this dive. It's a cord with the gas Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. This is the stuff like the Japanese product, and you can set it on fire. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Yep, those are nice. I have some good uh, burning hydrate. Have you ever burned hydrate in your hand? It's quite a surreal experience because it's cold, and you're, but it's on fire. It's this total, wow, this is a nice map field. So this is interesting. What is these look like little stromatolites? I don't know what that is. Um, so the a lot of the cracks in the surface are probably snail trails of gastropods, my, you know, moving through there and feeding on the microorganisms that live in the sediment. We'll definitely come back here later and core, um, but I hope we find uh, some venting gas in front of us. Certainly seems like we're headed in the right direction. We're picking up a lot more. Oh, those are that crab down there hiding. Like, I'm invisible. You can't see me. Bridge, are we? That's an updated waypoint for it. Thank you. There's a lot more on the bottom here than the past few places where we've dove. That's more kind. Yeah. Yeah. You know, this Vegetoa mat is likely serving as a road map to where the hydrate and the gas forms are. Yeah. Yeah. 
How much more common a gas seeps to the hydrothermal vents? Could they be the stepping stones? Oh, absolutely. The fauna are quite similar, but you don't see riftia at, at gas seeps. Oil seeps? Oil seeps either. They're too, they're just, there's, the, there's not enough energy to fuel the growth of a really large animal. I mean, you get a crazy abundance of these tube worms, but they, they grow much slower. In fact, they're, the lamellibranchia are, I believe, the longest lived invertebrate. One of Chuck Fisher's students aged them. They grow about a centimeter per year. We found some three meter long ones in the Gulf of Mexico. So 300 years old. Pretty amazing. A worm so living for 300 they, years. They were Oh, there was a bunch of them that got covered with the oil slime, yeah. Stuff, you know, falling out of them. They're just like the corals, yeah. I don't think anybody expected that, you know, that whole blizzard of oil snow, yeah. That's nasty. So a fish more likely to be um, trying to uh, predict around seeps to get out of the vents. I think you find a lot more fish around vents that are not oxygen compromised. I, I really think the reason we don't see fish here is the oxygen is so low. But it's still 31 micromolar here, so I'm not quite sure why we're not seeing more. Or, you know, I don't know why they, I thought the oxygen would be a little bit higher, but it's because we're on the, you know, the edge of the slope, but it's still pretty acutely anoxic here. Was this from the multi beam? This waypoint, or was it from? Yeah, for, yeah. Was it hit from the multi beam? Yeah, and then we've got uh, the new multi beam laid over top, and then that's the stuff in common. Uh, but that point is exactly just cross reference from okay. separate tasks. Okay. Yeah. So I suspect that the seepage site is where we were, that white mat. Uh, yeah. What do you think, Carmen? Based on your the, the the plume, where are we relative to that big plume field that you were showing me? Are we to the north of it? Well, I have here in the You know, I think the the oil is so heterogeneously distributed. It's not really. I mean, this kind of geology is not. This is doesn't really facilitate reservoir formation. They don't have really good um, because it's hydrothermal. The the, yeah. the basement reservoirs are just not. The oil basically flows out as opposed to getting trapped in a reservoir. So. Is there much hydrothermal activity on shore here? You know, I don't know. Carmen, do you know? Is there seep any hot springs and whatnot? Geothermal springs on shore? This area? Yeah. No, I don't think it's like the Long Valley in California. Okay. I, I don't. I don't think so. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, that's a good idea. Has anyone ever powered their experiments off the vents themselves? Peter has. Well, no, not not capturing energy. No, that'd be kind of a slow thing to try to do, though. Long-term monitoring. 
Yeah. Yeah. Boring, yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. Like yeah. Would anyone go down in a new suit? You know what? Would you go down in a new suit? I mean, wouldn't you do that if you had the opportunity? Oh, God, no. Why? <laughs> That's why I thought to be young kids. <laughs> and we've seen so much equipment destroyed. I yeah. I think foolhardy is the word. Yeah. Okay, I will go up at the space shuttle. I'll be down. I'll go up on that. He wants to go to Mars. Oh, yeah, Mars. I'll be yeah. happy. Yeah. Okay, this is looking interesting. It should be the same place. We've got college. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But here's. Yeah. But it's a little bit. Yeah. Like good. Yeah. That's the seepage area right there. I want to see bubbles though. Come on. Don't let us down. This is pretty active though. No, we're going to do that after we hopefully find some gas. It'd be nice if we found some gas. There's another squid. Hello, Mr. Squiddy. There's a live clam. There's a lot of gastropods. That's not a squid, that's an eel. Is that an eel? Oh, it is an eel. Yeah, yeah. That's it first looks like a squid from the It head. did. It was bent over. Ooh, what's that? What's that on the left? Look at the, the fist. Oh, that's my shirt. Ah. Straight ahead. There's something. Yeah. There has to be gas seepage. I mean, my goodness. Wow. Yeah. Scopes 10 to 20, 10 to 15. Jake, should be on that. So I was watching Blade Runner last time. What's the connection between that and uh, what? It's a serial corporation. No, that's the creator. Yeah. Well, the creator. It's got to be the creator of Wall, then. Yeah, it's the lip of the creator. There's a lot of shell hash. That's probably what's given that return. Well, we do want to collect cores here, but not right here. Um, yeah, they're gonna. It's gonna blow up when we core it. It's just gonna. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Let's go back to that nice white mat that we we saw in the beginning. So it, it is very near here. Well, they've got crater one and clam and muscle field as waypoints. I think it's crater one. Crater one we're on right now. Okay, so let's find the best patch of mat. Um, so we have to get somehow a camera on the cores as they're going in. 
the mat's been getting, so if, if they don't go straight in it, it basically takes the whole top two centimeters and drags it down to the bottom. So the yellow mats yesterday were all at the bottom of the core. So I want to, usually we can, if we can see it, it's a little bit easier to get it straight up and down. Sometimes they just don't. Whoa, nice one. Oh, let's go up there. Is this going to be like the other place? Is the water just saturated? I think so. I think it's just, it's all kinds of methane. Let's have a look up here and just, we'll pick up a spot and then we'll sit over here facing the map. Yeah. I know this may sound crazy and I know you do it the RV operations, but would it be possible if you wanted to change the ship head and just put the meat to the whole people in this area to see if you can see it? I think that's a great idea. Well, it depends if it's safe for the RV. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, would we have to sit down to do that, or? No, I'd rather be off the thing. Yeah. Yeah. What is this little thing right here? Let me zoom in on that. I'll try it without it. It's nice, Matt. I mean, although I don't know what is going on there. Is that where the bubbles are broken? Oh, wow. I don't know what that is. I've never seen anything quite like that in terms of sediment morphology. I think Carlos is right. I think this is something, this is not necessarily just cold seepage. This is hydrothermally impacted too. I would, I would land facing it because you're in the middle of the pockmark right now and if it is saturated and you land on it it's going to create a, such a mess that we'll never get out of it. It may create a mess that we'll never get out of it if you land over here. But I try to put the, when you porch out, how you know, you want to be able to core both of these areas. A good bit, yeah. Yesterday they were jam packed. It just speaks to um, Oh, for us, the cores are. The bio box is where they are. Really struggle to move and get it. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. One of the bio boxes off and should get everything in the middle. The better room for. Oh, then we'll do that tomorrow. Because we didn't, I mean, we could have done that today. We can't do it. Well, if they need rifted tomorrow, we'll have to. We'll have to work with them on it, but yeah, yeah, that would, yeah, it's it's absolutely fine. We could have made do with one today. Um, you want to core right the way? I want to core. I want to grab some in here because I don't know what that is. Um, but in this white mat too, I think we're going to core. Is is this something you think? That gas. Wow, that's beautiful, Bajiatella. Pictures. Yeah. Gorgeous. That might be oil in there too. There's little brown specks. Yeah, let's uh, 
We're going to take some chords here, no matter what. Yeah, that's got to be oil on there. Those little black spots. Yeah. Oh, it's it's petroleum, it's crude oil. Yeah, yeah. I would like to do how many of mine are there? Eight? Of yours? Nine. Four four of mine and five of yours. Okay. And I'd like three two for mine, two in the white and two in this over here. Okay. And then three of years in the white and three over here. So I'm going to draw a picture. So essentially, so I have nine. So two each of mine, two in the white and two in the whatever that other stuff is. And then three and three of the of your cores. Ten total. Ten total, yeah. And actually, that's probably overkill. Maybe two and two of yours. So, two, so eight total. So, okay. you're going to struggle with your left arm. Um, unless I take a tray of them. So, if your left arm takes two magnet scores, yeah. in the gray area, that's okay. I can let those, and then two, if I can rather get two of the weight, if you can work it out. Yeah. And we may have to reposition. Yeah. Unless you wanted to pick up and just look at the restart of the arm. That's okay. Yep. Yeah, if you want to start with the white, and if we can just, if it takes extra time to make sure they're straight up and down, let's take the extra time to do it right. And we need about two inches of water above the. And sorry if I'm repeating myself, but they have to stay upright. upright. Yeah, can't trip these high. And they need to go in there as gentle as possible because these are going to be super gassy. And if they go back in, they're very likely to go kerplooey. Um, need to take temperatures around here too. Don't let me forget that. Um, so are we going to do the brown coring first? Or the yeah, we'll these little that. stromatolite -y thingies, these guys? Yeah. Okay. Is it 
likely to be uh, I suspect it's going to be quite oily. <laughs> Is that straight up and down? I cannot no, tell. I'm, I'm just okay. Um, Before you ask Is, it, is that chord J5? Uh, Can't tell right now. Yeah, no, yeah, let's take them, put them all in, in on this side, and then we'll pull them all out, and then we'll flip around and do the white ones. Okay. So, sorry, I'm going to do four of yours, one, two, and then two in the white, and then put yep. those back in, and then we'll reposition and do ours. Yeah. Okay. I think that is J5, yeah. Yeah, it's J5. That looks pretty good. I have no idea what's going to happen when you punch through that. Yeah, let's go real slow because it's going to compress, I think. Let's give it a rest for one second before we go any deeper. See if we can get it to equalize pressure. Yeah. Yep. Now try it a little bit more. Yeah, that's much better. I don't know why that matters. Let's give it another second. Keep going. I think you're good. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Right there. Perfect. Sweet! There's gas! Hooray! What does that mean? Grand training. Different. It's different. 
Yeah. What is D234? D234. Maybe it keeps all about dive Aka. Aka. I need more sleep. These, I think, are, are these may be uh, what I call uh, oil mats. They're, they're, it's a, the oil actually sticks the sediment together, and it makes a little like tar patty. But it's not. It's an oil patty. It's not really tar. Um, I don't know if that's what it is, but I suspect that that might might be uh, what it is. Let's let's slow down for a second. You can see the lip on this guy on the back end. Yeah. Interesting. Position. Yep, I think so. Oh, this is beautiful. Stop right there. Perfect. Perfect. I'm going to release there. Yep.
So are you gonna you're gonna do all of the brown coring, or are you gonna do all my coring, and no, then? Well, so I'm gonna take two more of yours and do white them. Yep, sounds fine. And then we'll rack all those, and then reposition and come for all of ours. Yep. Uh, okay, no, that's fine. Do you have more handles? We do. We have lots. We have short and long. Well, they're shorter. We can make them shorter if you want. I think maybe we should take a look today. And yeah. Then if we get better samples, we cut them down and weld them. Yeah. These are going to be difficult to get back in. Yeah. So, yeah. <coughs> So these um, Vegetoa are motile. They can um, chemo. They, they carry out chemotaxis. Chemotaxis. So they can sense um, the right place to be in the sediment based on the, the their needs of oxygen and sulfide, and they will migrate up and down the sediment column uh, to to find the right position. If they get buried by sediment, they can crawl and climb above it. Um, so they're really clever and versatile in terms of, of being very well adapted to live in this kind of environment. That's a great question. I mean, my dream place would be right here, but that may be too far of a reach. bit further away. If you can get it a little tiny bit further from that edge, that's good right there. Perfect. Now give it one second right here and let it sort of chill so that that mat stays, doesn't get smeared. Oh, that's great. Okay, now slowly proceed. Cannot wait to run oil on these. I bet they're just loaded with hydrocarbons. Yeah. See how beautifully this is going in? These are just. 
Yeah, let's give it one second. It's starting to compress a little bit. Keep going. Keep going a little bit more. Perfect. If it's a little tiny bit crooked, we can account for that. That's not so bad. Yeah, that actually looks pretty darn good. Yeah. Good. Now give it a second. This is the weirdest looking. I mean, this has to be a layer of like just oil tar, tarry sediment. When it comes out, is it like this? Oh, just wait. It's going to be nasty. Yeah. Okay, proceed. That was 12, right? Let's let it rest for one second. See if that interface catches up. I 
Let's go a little bit more. I think it got a bit compacted. Perfect. So you're going to pull these and then reposition, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, pull these or do we just pull these and wrap them? Well, let's. let's um, what do you want to do? I mean, you can pull them and put them back in, if, or you can. If we pick up here, there's a chance that we're going to drop sediment. I think we're gonna. Yeah, I think if you can, you're gonna do the others with the starboard minute. I can do probably all the whites with the starboard minute. Yeah. Reaching across over there, maybe not. Well, we can reposition for. I'll tell you what. Let's let's do all the white ones first. At least we know these samples aren't contaminated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna release this guy. I would say just get um, four of your curves in the white mat to okay. make things easier. Just four in the white for now? I think, yeah. Four in the mat, four in the white, and we might take one in the oil patties. Okay. But four in the mat, that's enough for Elva to have a good set of replicates. And, you know, we've got our geochemistry course as a starter.
What number was that? Okay. Red one, yeah. I think that's good. These don't have to be as deep. She only needs the surface, right? The top, like, five centimeters? Yeah, so 10 centimeters is plenty. This one's 12? The next one is 12? I wouldn't have 13 either, that's bad luck.
That's good. Is that 12A or 12B? It's 12A, isn't it? It's not B. Going this out is A, right? Uh, yeah, 12A is out. Do we know what number this one is? This would be 12B. This one that's going in now is 12B? Okay. One more of these. Then we might try to reach into that. You know, I think this brown mat is, we, let's take two more of these. Because I think that brownish colored material is under the white material. Right. So. Two more, this one? Yeah, this one plus one additional. That one was 11, right? The one that just went out before. Uh, yeah, this one. Okay. This one is, which one is this? Nine?
to that spot right in the middle there. In between the two cones? A little bit down. Like right in there, yeah. Is that right there? Yeah, that works. Perfect. Let's let it sit for a second. Okay, go ahead. That's gorgeous. Give it a bit of a, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Stuck, yeah. Give it one second, let it chill out. It's that top part. If it starts down the side, it all oh, just like an avalanche. Okay, see so if you can get a little bit more. No idea how full it is. Yeah. Keep going a little bit more. Perfect. That's good. Yep. Yeah, so for this last one, let's try, I don't know if you can reach it, but it's actually, all this stuff is just overgrown with the white, I think. Yeah. So if you could get it right in there, or maybe right in here. That would be better yeah. than the same thing, just because the bio box. Okay, yep. What number is that? Uh, we'll know soon. I'm gonna rack this right away. Did we do this one? So we'll find out. Let's see if we can. It's one. Yeah, I think it was one. Yeah, it was one. Yeah.
gone a little bit more. Look at the pressure pushing the stuff out of that hole. Let it rest for one second. Bending a little bit. Yeah, okay. We're about half, two thirds in. Let's go halfway. Okay. Maybe go another quarter. So three quarters in the tube, and that's good. What number was it? Oh, look at that. Hold on. I gotta take a picture of it. Stop. Okay. Yep. That is the weirdest sediment. slow in there if you can because it's gonna it's perfect oh boy these are gonna blow up when they come up what number was that, uh, that was one. One. one okay no, I can't remember which one went in which position, but as long as we know that those... Yeah, yeah I know which ones are one. That was the number nine. Doesn't really matter. Yeah, if you can just pop them and they're kind of slow, try to maintain that matte surface. Although it's probably gonna get blown up with degassing on the way up. We, could, we can have dreams of good matte recovery. Somebody asked me the other day, if you could have anything in the world that you wanted to make your sampling easier, what would you have? And I said, pressurized core barrels. Wouldn't that be something if you could actually recover these things with not lose all the gas?
run to get some coffee. Does anybody want caffeine?
Hello, Jackie. I hope you're looking after my garden well. Can you change this window so I can see the questions? Or do they need to see it? Just if shorten it, shrink it a little bit. Yeah, perfect. Yeah. Okay. 
That's perfect. That duct tape actually comes in handy. Awesome. Just a little tap on the bunk? Yeah, they do need to be tapped down to secure them on the stopper, or they won't seal on the bottom. They should go down about a half an inch to an inch. I'd say that's down there. Yeah, try the jakes. Check that other one too. I did it twice, yeah. yeah. Okay. So, Carmen, um, where do you think we should go next to find big? Okay, so can you give us a heading and a, a rough estimate of yeah, distance so we can, distance, yes, yeah. God, this is some sulfitic sediment. Watch what happens when the cork comes out. Have you seen one come out yet? There's little white, little clear bubbles of gas. Yeah. I noticed the trains smelly Yeah, it's going to be a lot smellier this evening. I can tell you that. Oh no. Ben, do you want to push this one down further? 
Uh, I think we can't. Yeah, that's a pisser. I didn't realize it got that compacted. That's a bummer. We might have to take one more over there. Um, that's probably what, 10 centimeters? It's 25 centimeter core, so that's maybe 10 centimeters. I can shake it out. This one. Okay. Yeah. It's better than better than trying to. That looks perfect. Let's go back in there and get it. Just point on the screen where you'd like to take it. This was uh, seven. Yeah, so somewhere that isn't disturbed, like, can you reach right there? So the brownish, like right there. We're just going to have to go really slow, I, I guess. See the lip on this one? Yeah, yeah, it's normal. They these got machined a little off, so they don't come off. They just don't seal a hundred percent, but they're all right. Yep. Let's hit that interface and just sort of sit there for a second or two. So we're recoring number twenty-six. Just barely hit it and then wait. Yeah, let's just go down like an inch and just hold off. Perfect. Okay, let's let it sit there and ruminate for a minute. Okay, take a sample. Seven. Okay, let's start going down real slow. Anybody that thinks this job is easy, boy. Oh yeah, got some gas coming out. This stuff is pretty saturated, that is for sure. Keep going. Let's wait a second, let it equilibrate. This would be a pretty decent place for the osmo samples. Okay, keep going. It's going in. Let's try to get it up to about here. We can. Try to get a little bit more. What sample ID was that? That was sample ID number three. All right, let's pull it out and see what we got. 
Whoa. I knew it would start as soon as I quit taking pictures. Very bubbly. That's way better. Yeah. We've got a waypoint here, right? Because this potentially could be where the Osmo samplers end up. Oh, okay. About 30 minutes south of SMP. So, you can put one in there. Yeah, let's put one in here whenever you get a shot. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and get started. Yeah, we're Yep, I've got all the numbers. And I've got a picture of the brittle star on the core. So we are pretty well up to date. We did the recore.
Hello. And welcome to Research Vessel Falco's live feed from ROV Sebastian. Here we are in the Gulf of California, 1500 meters below the surface. Well, uh, ROV Sebastian is exploring one of the vents that we found last night. As you can see, there's lots of bacterial map. If you feel free to ask any questions, and we'll do our best to answer them. The moment it's lunchtime on board, lovely macaroni cheese, peanut chicken, good soup. So the control room, there's a lot of people coming and going. The moment we're just formulating the plan. The hummus, the hummus was really good. Falco has some absolutely amazing chefs. ROV pilots don't march on an empty stomach. So at the moment we're going to head off to a new position and look to see if there is another vent. I will see if we can uh, show you what we're seeing with our planning software. Unfortunately, no. One sec, I'll find out details of our next waypoint. Okay, so during the night, Falco, using its multi beam mapping system, detected several plumes in this area. One of them we've just been exploring and taking samples and there is another one approximately one kilometer to the south of us so sebastian's going to lift off from the seabed and move over to that location in tandem with the vessel as we go um, i might turn on the mapping system but we will be flying a little distance off the seabed so it won't be the best views for the time being but when we get there we'll be touching down and doing some more sampling also exploring to see what we find there. Okay, and off we go. This should take us approximately, how long do you think it'll take, Chris? 40 minutes. 42 minutes. minutes. Uh, seconds. Pilot says 42.6 minutes, roughly. Start the timer. As we transit along, we'll take a look see if there's anything interesting so Falco's approximately how far away is Falco from us at the moment 80 meters so the ship's slowly moving and and the ROV 2000 meter well 1500 meters below her is matching her speed and we're moving to the next location and on our multi-beam system we can see a large plume Hang on a second, hang on a second. Um, yeah, but it's going to be where the ship is. Let me, um, do you want to just hold a second? I'll go and get...
Okay. We've checked out the feature and we're going to go look at something else. As we're slowly moving, our multi beam system is pinging and we are detecting features on the seabed. Now, we wouldn't normally do this when operating the ROV because the ship's moving really slow. We're collecting a lot of data. But our multi beam has this cool function that allows us to look from the surface to the seabed as well as telling us where the seabed is. And now that's interesting because our acoustic systems really, really like bubbles. Uh, some of the water coming out of the vents or in the form of seeps coming out of just gas. We know um, they've been coming across methane and various gases during this cruises. During this cruise, and some of our samples have been really saturated with gas. But we're heading slightly down slope to go and look at a large fracture area that was picked up on Falco's multi beam during the evening. If you've got any questions, feel free to ask them on our audio feed. We've currently got our technicians and pilots here. If you've got any questions about the vehicle, or Sebastian, we call it the vehicle, let us know. Okay, sorry about that. We were just having a debate. We were we were starting on our way to the next waypoint when we came across this mound of bacterial mat. The moment uh, principal scientist has just phoned us, and she's down having lunch and told us to just document this um, area, and then we will drop a waypoint in case we need to come back here. Obviously, we're interested in some of this bacterial mat and the areas that it's found. Highlights coming on. Highlights are on. Let me just try something.
and we're continuing on our way. So we're heading roughly south from this location. For the next 30 minutes or so, it'll just be us transiting across the seabed. Hello, Jackie. How are you doing? Hope things are nice in Southampton. And a good question. Um, does the pressure of the deep ocean affect Sebastian? Yes. I I will hand you over to a ROV pilot for that. Hello, yes, the pressure does affect Sebastian. Um, obviously, we're down at this time at 1,539 meters, and it feels every bit of that. We do have special um, uh, flotation and other vessels that can combat that um, but you will see definitely um, feedings will get loose um, if you don't have things properly compensated um, air pressure and um, outside pressure can be can affect the uh, integrity of some of our equipment um, but it is built for that way it's actually built to go significantly deeper than we are right now so it won't have any negative effects for this dive um, once you get down to say 4,500, 5,000 meters, that's whenever things would start to get a little bit, you know, a little bit dicier, I guess would be the word. Thank you. Okay, in a moment, I'm going to post on our Facebook and YouTube feed a link to the galleries from yesterday's dive. Feel free to browse these. Yesterday we went to initially a bacterial mat area, um, which we'd identified on our multi-beam. There was a lot of gas coming out of there. We visited it and it was a fracture with a lot of bacterial mat. We then transited for two kilometers north, visiting a few little lumps and bumps on the way two big pagoda and little pagoda vents. After that, we went to the northwest and investigated another signature we got from our multi-beam. And this turned out to be lots more um, vents. One of them was named Dragon Vent, as it was St. David's Day, a national uh, day in Wales. And then there was uh, several other vents around that area, which we hope to return to in the next two weeks, within the next 10 days, actually, and see Exactly what they look at. Nine. I'm just reminded nine. <laughs> what are you
we've gone live. So, hello everyone. Um, just as we're transiting to the next site, we've just switched to a view of the control room up in our picture in picture. So you can see us guys. Hi. Closest to you in the blue top, you've got Russ, our V uh, supervisor. He's piloting the vehicle. And then next to him, you've got Chris, who's the co-pilot, keeping a lookout keeping a monitor of all Sebastian systems and I'm over here furthest away keeping an eye on the data and maintaining the link for the live system we've also got Monica oh god <laughs> Carmen <laughs> hey just got the wrong name on live on that Carmen's actually processing some of the multi-beam data acquired for this area so she's been pinpointing some of the actual plumes of gas that we're seeing and also going over the multi-beam and supply and waypoints for this dive yeah, well. so that's the control room at the moment there's actually um, no scientists really as such apart from Carmen in here she sat in the back so at the back you've usually got the uh, navigator or event logger station for the scientist the main console and then down here is where Professor Joy sits when we're doing science Excellent. and let's switch back okay we're well. Oh, is that a ray? Is that a ray right there? What is that? Oh, it's a chimera. Yeah. It's one of the big, I've, first one I've seen. A chimera. Yeah. Yeah. Chimera? Yeah, they kind of, they live okay, in a pretty sorry, harsh was, um, environment. They, was due they to tend post to look the link to our gallery, so up. we'll post that now. This will be the Around images for yesterday's dive. The Gulf of Feel Mexico. free to browse them. They have lesions on there. There's 11 pages of images. From just being oh. in the brine and Feel free to troll food doing crazy things like diving into the brine. Have any questions on any of them? That's much not. on the bacteria that live there. Answer them. Yeah. How does the pressure affect Sebastian? Sebastian is very tough. Uh, the frame, it, really, there's no pressure on the vehicle. If you want to comment on that. You did that, yeah. Oh, you did that already? Good, good, good. OK, I've got a question for you. Why hydrothermal vents? Why did you? Want to study these? Why do I like to study hydrothermal vents? Because everything happens faster and grows bigger at hydrothermal vents. You can study processes that occur at a snail's pace in a typical environment. It's it's all accelerated at vents, and vents are a place. They're they're the kind of environment where we think the earliest life forms evolved. So it's a it's a it's it's a it's a place where you have the possibility of of discovering a lot about early metabolisms and how metabolisms diversified and why. So there's a lot of there's a lot of historical reason for studying them and in, in the present day, you know, the processes that happen at, at vents happen everywhere else. They're just much slower and harder to document. So the vents kind of give you a way to, I don't know, see things that are otherwise invisible. Okay, cool. 
I've got to ask then, uh, what's the coolest thing you found at a hydrothermal vent? Or... Mm. Coolest thing we found at a hydrothermal vent. I think, you know, I kind of like, I love the rocks. I love the microbes, but I love the rocks too. And sometimes you can find these rocks that have, you know, secondary mineralization and where there's just metal veins all over the, precipitated in the crevices of the rocks and they're just spectacular. I think Big Pagoda would count as one of the most spectacular yeah. things, if not the most spectacular thing that I've ever seen. Just a phenomenal feature. I think it gives you an appreciation for what it must have been for the folks who studied the Lost City. You know, just coming up to that and being blown away by the structure. You know, it's not the Lost City, obviously, but... Was that the first, one of the first fan systems? No, it was, that, that was the ultramafic off-axis, low temperature okay. feature along the Mid-Atlantic Ridge, the western part of the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. So it's the, it's the carbonate, giant towering carbonate chimneys. And it's really spectacular. There's another one. Good gracious. We haven't seen many in, much in the way of fish at all. And we're getting a nice show. Look, there's, it's, it's getting another, a nice show today. Snake eel. These are anemones. How close? Are we still pretty far away? Yeah, we're still pretty far away. <laughs> Is that the lander? Where's the lander? Is it in front Behind of us? us? Behind us? Okay. Yeah, this, this, this okay. Say hello to Ava. We see that you logged on and uh, are watching. The cable is not quite far enough to reach over to Russ, but he says hello as well. Hope you're nice. doing well. And uh, he was telling me about the Hawaii trip. Very jealous. So you guys have fun, and I'll talk to you later. What is that? Yeah, it's a sea pen. Good gracious. Very lonely sea pen with a brittle star. I gotta take a picture of that. So we think sea pen with a brittle star on it and a fish. And we're continuing south. About a thousand, well, roughly one kilometer to go. Joining us with remotely operated vehicle Sebastian. We're currently 1500 meters under the Gulf of California. We're heading south to our next investigation site. During the night, we mapped this area with uh, research vessel Falco using its multi beam system. And we detected several gas plumes. There were additions come here before. No, this okay. is the first 
first time this area has been explored. This was suggested to us by our colleague in, in Mexico, Carlos Motera, and Carlos felt like this would be a really good target uh, for finding a system where sort of hydrothermalism and uh, cold, cold seepism and sort of smash together. And I think he's right. I think we're going to find an amalgam of, of, of vents and seeps based on what we've seen so far in the dive. Has anybody ever seen a sea pen with a brittle star associate? With a brittle star, yeah. yeah. We were up here last uh, ice cruise. So in Pescadero? Yeah. <laughs> Sweet. What are these? Ooh, that sounds fancy. What is that? What is that over to the port? Oh, it's a big, it's just current, yeah. Oh, no, it's a. Um, There's two of them there. Oh, it's just stopped. Yeah. Up in the current. Oh, yeah. <laughs> More of these sea pens.
These things are all over the place. That's interesting. Yeah. It's been like 32 to Yeah, it may, it may be able to fix that a little bit by just changing the angle here. Yeah. Okay, thanks for joining us. Uh, these images are coming from remotely operated vehicle Sebastian. Currently, we're transiting between uh, areas of interest, so we've got about 800 meters or so to go. We'll be there in about 30 minutes. So stay tuned, enjoy the transit. I'm just told it's 27.86 minutes until we get there. Well, la ti da. Go Sit back, enjoy this. Enjoy the ROV moving through what is a giant snow globe and the occasional critters that we see. When we get on, on to our next station, Andy will take back over the audio. Myself. 
me están pidiendo que dé algunas reseñas eh, con respecto a lo que hacen eh, de investigación, principalmente con el ROV, bueno, ROV, a quien le llaman así. <risa> eh, Sebastián tiene la capacidad para tomar diferentes tipos de muestras, principalmente eh, con los núcleos eh, de sedimentos, también tiene, como han visto, para tomar muestras biológicas, algunas cajas especiales para llevar muestras de roca si es necesario. Y bueno, la capacidad de video es lo que más nos impresiona. No sé si tuvieron la oportunidad de ver el video de aproximada, de hace dos días, el Dive 232. Es un video súper impresionante de las estructuras que nos encontramos en Guaymas. Y nada más de todo lo que salió de videos y fotos de, de, de esa investigación fueron 900 gigas, 937 gigabytes. O sea que imagínense la cantidad de información que se genera en este barco y todo el soporte técnico que deben de tener para que ustedes en su casa puedan estar viendo los videos un día tras otro día. Entonces, para mí es súper importante este soporte técnico que tienen dentro del barco, las comunicaciones, eh, los sistemas de alertas, todo, 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 la navegación, excelente. Eh, en cuestión a lo que tiene que ver con, con, la, con el posicionamiento, con lo que es la emisión de, de la onda acústica para estar con, en contacto con el ROF y todo, está funcionando súper bien. Eh, también tienen un sistema hidroacústico multi -as, manejan dos ecosondas, una para aguas someras, que es la EM710, y una ecosonda multi EM302, que es para aguas profundas. Ellos están comprometidos de alguna forma con, tan, con obtener siempre buena calidad de datos, entonces dan mucho soporte a los, a los científicos con este tipo de de información para que sepan dónde están sus puntos, cómo pueden arribar con facilidad a ellos. Y pues en particular aquí mi trabajo es procesar, eh, apoyar en las labores de compilación de información de todo lo que estamos levantando, los videos, voy a hacer el fotomosaico y finalmente eh, pues mapear las plumas. La verdad es muy interesante, yo sé que muchas personas en México tienen poquita oportunidad de estarse entreteniendo tanto tiempo viendo estos videos. Yo paso aproximadamente las 12 horas que, que dura la inmersión tomando datos y, y viendo animalitos y todo lo que hay. Entonces, si tienen dudas, pues sería muy bueno que los pre, las pregunten. Eh, aquí más que nada lo que están investigando es pues cómo actúan los microorganismos, cuáles son sus características, sus novedades, cómo es que ayudan a, ent a entender la evolución del planeta en estas zonas que pues carecen muchísimo de oxígeno y al mismo tiempo pues presentan este, esta influencia de la zona de, de Rift, donde proviene el calor del manto interior de la Tierra para que se presenten estas ventilas hidrotermales. Creo que es todo lo que tengo que decir por el momento, pero si tienen dudas, no olviden preguntar, aquí se los traducimos.
a lot of particles in the water column there. Kind of looks like the Star Trek Enterprise when, right before they hit warp speed, you know, the way the stars look. The particles seem to be picking up a little bit. Yeah. It's pretty dense. Probably gonna find the coolest thing ever and then have to go pick up the elevator and bring it back here. Ooh, look at that. Salt poop. It's another chimera. Three-headed fish. Why is that on the sample list? Three-headed fish. Huh. I didn't know. I didn't do. I don't think I've seen one. Probably not. There's another eel. There's another dead squid over there. There's more stuff in the water column, but fewer brittle stars. There's a big, giant holothurian coming up. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, the sediment is pretty rich. And the starfish are back. I mean, look at all the large particles of marine snow we're seeing. The big, just mucus houses that are sinking in the set, sinking through the water column. Sedimentation right out here has got to be tremendous.
tweet about what we see and why we're doing this transit. Lots of big stuff on the bottom. Big anemone, big giant sea cucumbers. Why are they so big? I don't know why they're so big. There's lots of food here. Look at the water column. It's just chock full. So, hi everyone, welcome on board the RV Falcor. How, how's everyone doing today? Good afternoon from the ocean. It's a pretty spectacular day. It's so calm at the moment. Like, it looks quite calm under here and it's pretty calm on the surface. It's basically like a swimming pool out there at the moment, which is not always the case. Um, my name's Tom Hoffman and I'm a filmmaker, documentary person, science communicator on board RV Falcor. This is my fifth trip to sea and there's quite a few people doing similar stuff to me that come out here trying to share some of these cool stories and things that we're finding. And artist as well is another thing that the Schmidt Ocean Institute runs, artist in residence program. So you can come join on the ship make music inspired by these unusual sights that you're seeing. What else we've got? Knitting. There's, there's people who've done knitting on the ship. Comic books, 3D animation. Annabelle Slater's on here at the moment. He does incredible 3D animations that yeah, will be really cool to share with everyone. And yeah, so yeah, my name's Tom Hoffman and my background is in science communication. And yeah, the first time I came aboard a ship like this, it was, yeah, pretty crazy, a lot of unknowns. The first day, I was pretty seasick. We had to leave port early because there was a typhoon, and I was feeling pretty rough. And the first time you come to sea, you don't really know if what's normal or not. Is this level of seasickness fine, or am I going to feel like this way for the whole five weeks? But in the end, everything settles down, and you calm down and get the science started, which is what we're all here for. And yeah, I'm learning a lot about microbes on this trip. Keep talking, Tom. You have to do it for at least an hour before you are professional. Okay, an hour. That, that's easy. 
Do you want me to do any stand-up routines or nope. keep it straight? Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I mean, so my job here is to make little films and help write blogs and take photos of things that are happening on the ship. And we've seen some of the most incredible stuff that people on the ship have seen. And a lot of them have spent basically years at sea and have never seen anything like this. I think later today we're going to have a film that shows some of the highlights of the dives we've done so far. And it's something very unusual about this location. It's part um, of relatively young ocean where you have all these dynamic processes that happened, you know, the similar things that were happening at the start of Earth history. And it's pretty exciting to think about how these hot, mineral rich chemical locations are fueling some of these incredible forms of life. Very good talk. Thanks. So yeah, if you're a budding filmmaker out there, you should check out the Schmidt Ocean Institute website. And uh, yeah, they're always looking for excellent people to get involved. The number of skills and different routes to finding a way on a ship, uh, there's so many. Incredible chefs that keep everyone fueled and going. Uh, marine techs who keep the whole show on the road, linking between running this kind of massive ship and running these delicate tiny science experiments it requires a real range of skills but if there's one thing I've noticed about everyone that comes on these trips is that curiosity is the key if you're curious if you wonder why if you're interested by things if you're interested by people if you have questions then you can find a career working in science research and there's something about the ocean you can't really say oh it's not my job I don't do that everyone has to pitch in does lots of different things throughout the day I even got to do some science on this trip you know occasionally they let me um, help put do simple basic stuff you know I'm not allowed to do anything complicated but the simple things well under with supervision exactly <laughs> oh, I get to use the arm. There's all sorts of exciting things you can get involved with. I like the actual force feedback until you uh, re index it and your fingers in the way. That always hurt. Yeah, the first time I came to sea, I remember thinking, you know, we were going away for five weeks without returning back to shore, and you start to worry, like, what am I going to do if a bit of my equipment breaks or something goes wrong? But, you know, already things have changed a lot. Russ, the RV program manager, has a 3D printer on board, so you can make things as you go. You can not only replace broken things, but you can design new things when you come across a new environment. You could also print some muscles and put them there. <laughs> Christian's uh, keen for us to print some muscles. If, any, if, anyone, if anyone's got a good 3D muscle printing um, uh, file. Oh, I like that. See, there's a lot of creativity on a ship could be from you know spending lots of long evenings together see if anyone has any questions about uh, working at sea doing science and doing science communication just yeah drop us a comment bridge RV that's your waypoint update heading to the west Thank you. Someone's asking if we see a three-headed fish, don't you want to sample it? Uh, that would be a source of great debate. There's always, uh, you know, interesting things you see, but if it's not part of the main science objectives, 
sometimes you just gotta we don't impulsively take we're no. strictly permitted in what we do. Exactly. We don't have a permit for three headed fish, so we would leave them well alone. We yes. film it. But that's even filming stuff, sometimes you have to make a decision. You know, some days you're just seeing so much stuff that you're interested in, but you just can't justify spending all the time you'd want to. So much of the sea floor we just don't know anything about. Um, and you could sit and watch a little crevice that you found for hours, wondering what might be in there. But, I don't know, is that all right? You know, it's, you've just got to move on because there's questions that so we've decided search for a doctor you should what search for a doctor if you do that really <laughs> oh wow does anyone know what that is that's a thing these are crinoids 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 i haven't seen a crino down here yet there you go scratch them off it's like train spot on the like corals they seem to be everywhere um, These are there's large. Yeah. Um, That's a cool looking guy. See if I can show you a picture of one. That looks like a whiteboard eraser. Driscoll, uh, he's been posting lots of insightful, interesting comments on the YouTube stream, is asking if there's an artist on this cruise. And there is an awesome artist on this cruise called Annabelle Slater. Um, and yeah, she'll be posting some of her work soon. She does these incredible 3D animations and illustrations, um, and potentially making games even. She's got crazy skills. So yeah, have a look. Um, on the hashtag microbial mysteries as the cruise goes on and on the Schmidt Ocean website for some blogs that Annabelle will be writing. Uh, yeah, I think it's such an awesome thing that they do to bring uh, artists on board. You get a whole different perspective. Um, yeah. James, if you're listening, do you have an artistic leaning? Could you be persuaded to come on board with your watercolors or your knitting needles? They're anemones, yeah, they're really giant anemones. Lots of sea pens, too, for pearl stars and shells. How close are we? We are about 70 meters. Crinoid. Is that a crinoid? Yes. It's not a Brasinga, is it? It's a good looking one. I don't know what these names are. So it's not a Brasinga? No, they've been on the cruise for a while. Are these the ones that like feather that move in a really weird yeah, feathery yeah. way? We shot some incredible footage of a crinoid on the, the Deep Corals of Phoenix cruise in 2017. Yeah, if you search for crinoid Schmidt Ocean, you'll find some really cool stuff. That's what I, initially, I thought it was like a Basinger. So uh, yeah. Basinger. Yeah. Uh, oh. Well, Brazilians are, are a group of yeah. crin crinids. Those are the ones that, that can walk. There's another group that, yeah, there's yeah. another group that it's, uh, that they are sitting, they have a stalk and they are sessile. Okay. Like those ones? No, those can walk. <laughs> How do they feed? They just take over. No, they have, they have like sea stars, they have their mouth in the middle of, so in the center of the, of the inner circle and they, I mean these, um, they, they capture stuff from the, um, they, they capture particles and then guide them to the mouth and eat them. So all of this kind of white dots that we're seeing on the screen, that's good news for a crinoid? Potential, yes. Organic material. 
but there might be stuff they don't want as well. So they're not very picky. <laughs> not a fussy eater. <laughs> okay, well that's a good attitude to have. Yeah. It's kind of interesting thing that there's some extreme specialism down here and then there's also some people who aren't very picky and they're sort of different strategies you can... No, specialism, I, I mean, specialism, you find, find specialists at the vents, so th these animals that are live in symbiosis with uh, symbionts, those are specialized to the fluids that come out of the vents. But all the, most of the others are, they, they take what they get because food is a limited resource. And I mean, there's of course animals that are more carnivorous, others are detritus feeders. Um, but there are no strict carnivores here. There's, so the carnivores also eat dead material. So in shallow water, this would be very separated. <laughs> James Driscoll is offering to scrub the head for a bunk. There you are. You're hired. That's one of them being held by a scientist. He cleans my shower and bath and sleeps crazy. Yeah. There's one in here which looks even more obscene, but. ROV pilot Chris is offering you a slot on his couch if you keep his uh, cabin tidy. It's a good swap. That's what they look like when you open them up. Wow. What's that? It's one of those things that you've seen on the seabed like for a three? Yeah, yeah. It's coming. Yeah. That's big. A squat lobster. It's a good sign. They suggest we're getting close. So people at home, they could help you in the in your mission, right? What should we be looking out for? Gas hydrate. Muscles. muscles. Gas okay. hydrate and muscles, people. And That's this, what we need. This is this is what we want. Okay. Can I describe that? It's a very attractive kind of almost golden orange. No, do it <laughs> no. in the style of 1920s radio where you have to describe have to get everything. The dark, the shit color, dark brown. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't use that. I wouldn't use that. Uh -huh. <laughs> the <laughs> <laughs> picture. <laughs> and they live in like kind of large mounds. You would expect. That does. <laughs> Look at that one. Totally open picture that one, isn't it? Uh, dress up a muscle as gladiator and call it muscle. Crew. And you know there's something going on with James that's still in the background. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. I'm. Can I clip you on for a bit? I want to ask you a question. So this is it, yeah? Well, not yet. All right. We have, we're, we're going to have to get these things to come around. We're in the vicinity of the big field. Right, Carmen? Yeah. Other than around. It's not a beauty of Papa. You have a car in here. You have a car in here. Book. He isn't there one already, but we could. One crinoid, two crinoid, three crinoid, four. Six, six, seven. Wow. Look at that. 
Oh. Oh, wait, no, well, you can't turn away at the fucking thing. It is carvers. I'll see. I mean, I want to see, like, a geyser. They don't look like you, what you see. It's about this big, typically, with bubbles coming out of the bottom. And, oh, there's. I don't know. Looks like a mussel or a clamshell. That's a clamshell. Maybe. Christian, look. Oh, it's an octopus. What's that? Brittle star with what? Is it like a pouch? I don't know. Oh, for God's sake. It's brittle stars. What's that shell right there? Oh, God. Isn't that a muscle? I mean, shit. Sorry, people. Don't worry. Actually, I can't see it. It's because I'm screwing the camera up. The one muscle that we see, and I'm like so excited I can't focus the camera. Well, I'm dyslexic, and this stick is like opposite for my brain. Well, I've never flown a helicopter, so that doesn't really help me. Okay, that's a muscle shell. That is totally a muscle shell. Well, it used to be a muscle, but now it's a now it's brittle star food. It's actually quite cool. Yeah, let's because that look at all those. The one muscle in the Guaymas yeah, Basin the is Guaymas eaten. Basin, it's extinct. <laughs> <laughs> the last. The fate of the last Bathymodiolus in the in the Guamas Basin. There it is. Oh no, Christian's coming. You better just read out. <laughs> okay, we get a highlight. Let's keep going. Where there's a dead, where there's a shell, there has to be. Yeah. yeah. There has to be. There has to be. He is pretty cool. He is, oh, let's get some highlight of him, too. He's quite, uh... Is that a dead muscle or something? It is a dead muscle. We dead. saw a muscle, and there might, it might be another one up there. Yeah. Look at that. A it dead muscle getting eaten by brittle this stars. This is right. print that we throw overboard tonight. Yep. <laughs> 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 Look at that there. Have you ever seen... Get all oh those little brittle goodness. stars. <laughs> well, dead muscle is a good sign, no? Dead muscles are always a good sign. <laughs> always going in. He's like, you can't see. You can't see. I got one head. Another one will come. So these guys aren't that good at changing color. I don't know. Other than the right. Doesn't make sense. It's true. Down there. There we go. Yeah. 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 Is that another octopus up there? Here? Yeah, We've seen more animals on this dive. Big holotherians. Yeah. What's the octopus? It's 33. <laughs> I know. <laughs> We've even seen four chimera, big ones. Chimera? You saw chimera? Four so far. I saw I saw a couple more this morning. I saw for the first time that bird in the air. Yeah. Like what's that? <laughs> They were happier than the brine chimera in the Gulf of yeah, Mexico, yeah, though. They don't have the... To that 
Her garbage seems good. I wouldn't know you freaking garbage. Good. I don't think I'm gonna hate you if it's they're all over in uh some of the We're going to find muscles here. We're going to find muscles here. Yeah. Do we see anything? Carmen, where should we go next? That's another dead muscle, dead or that might be the same one that we saw before, actually. Okay. Yeah. Are we having an internet outage today? It looks like we are, but we're at the moment. Okay. It's not a 20 or a 20 or a 15. Uh, 20 or a 20. Oh, there's a clam. There's a giant holotherian. Yep. Should we get some highlights of him? Yeah, he's kind of nice. Look at this guy. Look, I'm not screwing the camera up, guys. Yeah, it only takes 20 days to get used to it. Well, there's no shortage of food down here. It's like the McDonald's of the deep sea. It makes big, fat holotherians. Like yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's 30, 40 centimeters long. So I got a this morning I got a direct message from Twitter from my housemate from grad school asking me to collect clams for her. She does hydrodynamics. She's like, these are the most bizarre clams I've ever seen. Can you please collect them for me? She's a different mayor in France. It's crazy though. Just like <laughs> 